Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I want to explain how to use the PyClone add-on with the standard version of Blender. If you're unfamiliar, I've been working on an asset management system for Blender, and I've released several different types of libraries, from architectural assets to libraries that help you maintain standard Blender objects, materials, collections, environments, those sorts of things. So up until now, this has only worked with my custom build of Blender but I've just made some changes to allow this to work with the standard version of Blender as a simple add-on. The functionality has changed just a little bit, but for the most part, everything works the same. So here I have the standard version of Blender 2.91, and I've also downloaded the PyClone add-on and the Home Builder library, so I have these in my Downloads folder right now. And when I install those libraries, it's going to extend the file browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split my space here by just dragging here in the top corner. And I'm going to change this to be the file browser space. And with that done, I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit, Preferences. And here I'm going to go to the Add-ons. And I'm going to go ahead and install my add-on. Go to the PyClone Downloads. And first, I want to install the PyClone add-on, because that's responsible for registering any other library that I install. So with that selected, click Install Add-on, and we'll go ahead and enable that. You should notice that it makes some room for the different libraries and things that we're going to register in this space. Next, we'll go ahead and install the Home Builder library. So we'll go and select that, click Install Add-on, and here we'll go ahead and enable that. And there we should see the Home Builder library show up. So we'll go ahead and just close out of this. We'll activate the library. And here, let's just shrink this down just a bit. And before I add an asset here, I'm going to go ahead and just clear out my scene. And I'm going to set some just default, default settings that I typically like. So here, I always turn on ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. I typically like to work in material mode. I turn off the relationship lines. I find those to be distracting, especially when working with the PyClone assemblies. And then I set my snap to be vertex. And that's everything that I need to set up. So I'm going to go and just save that as my default startup file. And now, typically when you're working with the custom build that I create, all you would do to add an asset is drag and drop this into the scene, but you'll notice in the standard version of Blender, it doesn't work the same. That just adds an empty image of the asset, which isn't what we want. So we'll type X to delete that. And the way that this works now is by accessing a hotkey. And the hotkey works on whatever asset you currently have selected in your library. And so here, if I have the range selected, and if I type P, for PyClone or Place with my cursor in the 3D viewport, you'll notice that that will drop the asset. And so it works the same way to where I can position this where I want to, the assets snap to the other assets in the scene. And so the only real difference is just the drag and drop operation doesn't work the same way. And overall, I think that while drag and drop is intuitive and easy for users to remember how to do, um, using the P key actually does save some time. You can add assets quite a bit quicker. And so let's go ahead and do a quick demonstration of creating a scene using the Home Builder library. All right, so I'll start out by adding in some walls into my scene. Again, so I'm just going to select the asset and type P on my keyboard. And now I can just draw out some random shape for now. OK, now with that, I'm going to go ahead and access the prompts of the wall and add in a floor. And then I'll select this floor, and I'm going to change the size of the boards by just making those a bit smaller. OK, and now let's go ahead and add in some cabinets. So I'll go ahead and switch to the cabinet library. And here, I'll select this two-door tall, type P on my keyboard, and go and place that there. And it took me a little bit of muscle memory to not drag and drop these assets, because I've been so used to doing that. But here, I'm just you know selecting on my asset type P, and that allows me to just place that right in there. So it's very quick and easy. In a lot of ways, a lot easier to do than just dragging and dropping these. So it works out pretty well. It's going to shrink this up just so I have my one back wall here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this cabinet. So I'm going to right click, go to my cabinet commands, and select duplicate. And so now I'm going to use my arrow keys. That just allows me a quick way of just flipping this around. I'll we'll just go ahead and drop that right about there. And then I'll select the drawer cabinet again and type P to place a couple of these on both sides there. 
Next, let's go ahead and add in some appliances. So here, I'll go ahead and have this be my sink cabinet. So I'll go to the prompts of that, and then I'm gonna add in a large sink and a faucet to that. So we can see how those came in, it works out well. And then next, we'll go ahead and just put a cooktop on this. So in the cabinet prompts again, we'll select add cooktop, and here I'll go ahead and choose this one. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and just add in one cabinet on the back side of this. Just um, select the two-door base, type P. I'm just going to put it on the very end here. But if I access the prompts of this, here I can change the rotation. And so I'm just going to go and set this to be zero to flip that all the way around. And then we'll go ahead and set the depth to be a little bit more shallow in the exterior. I'm also going to turn off the poles because this is just going to act as kind of an extension to the island here. And now I just want to make this extend the full width of my island. So if I select this arrow button right here, you'll notice that that sets the little yellow dot. Basically, the target point is going to be the width of this cabinet. And so all I do is I just go ahead and use the Move tool. Now you can see I can move this. And here I'll just snap it to the very end. So that works out pretty well. Um, Let's go ahead and add in, I'm going to shrink this wall up by accessing the prompts and just dragging it in a bit. And here, let's go ahead and add in a door. So I'll type P. So these work the same way. You just select the asset and you can add these to the wall. I'll type escape to cancel that. And let's go ahead and drag in, or again, not drag, use the selection and type P. And we'll just put one of these there. And I want to put three windows, but rather than placing three individual ones, I'm just going to place one, type escape to cancel. And then here I will access the window prompts. And I'm just going to set the quantity to be three. And then here I will just make the width a bit smaller. Go and change the height to be almost to the top of our wall there. And I'm also going to change my tall cabinets. Here if I right click and go to the prompts. Now I am currently set to metric in meters, um, but being in the US, I work in inches. Um, so I'm just going to type in 96 inches there, just because I don't know exactly what that is in meters. So I just want that to go all the way up to the top of the wall. So we'll just type 96 inches. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got some information added to our scene. Let's go ahead and make some adjustments to this. So here in the library interface. I can adjust things like materials and different parts. So let's go and first just select a different material here. I'm just going to use this painted wood material. So with that selected, I can now assign that to the different pointers. And so here I'm going to change all of my cabinet surfaces. So my cabinet exposed surfaces, edges, interior, and doors. I just click on those buttons and you can see how that updates the material that's assigned to that pointer. And then here we can click update materials. And you can see that changes everything in the scene that we've adjusted, which is exactly what we're looking for. And then let's also change the fronts here. So this works the same way. I have my selection and I'll just choose the shaker door and go ahead and update all of the different styles of doors. So base tall upper and the drawer fronts. Click update here. Okay. And a little difficult to see, but here in solid, you can see now that it's changed out the, the styles of the doors and drawer fronts that we're using in this scene here. So that looks good. Finally, you can always just make any, I mean, obviously this is Blender, so you can make any adjustments that you can in Blender. So if I just click on one of these parts and go to the material tab, you can see here's that painted white wood that we've added. But if I wanted to, I can just make a change to this. Let's make this black. And so here you can see how you can just quickly make any adjustments and that will update your entire scene. And so here we'll just go ahead and call this finished. And even though this design can use a lot of improvements, you can see how just in a few minutes you can quickly lay out these types of scenes. Now I'm going to be making a lot of improvements to this library. This is really just the basics um, of what I have done right now. And if you want to support the development, I have an extended asset library which provides you with hundreds of additional assets from different appliances, materials, door styles, all sorts of data. I'm currently in the process of moving the library from my website to the Blender market. 
it just makes it a little bit more accessible to certain parts of the world and also it makes it easy for me to directly contribute to the standard blender development fund and so it just makes it really nice to be able to automatically do that from the blender market if you've already purchased the extended asset library on my website your purchase will automatically just be transferred over to the blender market and that's where i'm going to be delivering all of the updates to the library so i'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video i hope that you found it helpful and i'll see you in the next one